honestly, I didn't expect there would be so many of you, and I, I don't mean uh, here particularly, uh, I mean here altogether. So, um, I've been living thinking that there are six billion uh, of us on this planet. Turns out there's more than seven billion uh, of us here already. And yet, um, you know, many surveys and popular sentiments suggest people feel more and more isolated, more and more lonely, more and more depressed or, or, or just bored. Which made me wonder, with uh, how many people out of those seven billion can one actually have a meaningful relationships uh, with? And uh, I'm not talking here about that illusion created by Facebook or, or Twitter. I mean, like real friendships. Uh, and uh, just if I can ask you to, to think and count, how, how many real friends do you think you have? You know, with how many people can you have a long and interesting conversation with? Or how many people would you invite and would like to see for your birthday? Or how many people in unfortunate circumstances would show up uh, in, a, in a hospital? Well, it turns out there, there is a number. There's a number for everything these days. And you might have heard of Dunbar's number. Who has? OK, good. <laughs> Uh, Dunbar's number is essentially a cognitive limit to the number of people one can have or maintain stable social uh, relationships with. Any guesses? Uh, how much is that number? One? <laughs> no? How much? 49. Okay, we're getting closer. It turns out it's 150 which if you think is, is not that little. So if previously, when you were counting your friends and people you, you like to, to, to talk with, uh, if you counted more like 49 or, or 60, even if you got it up to, to 100, you can see that there's still quite some space or room for enlargement, so to say, of, uh, of mind and heart in respect to, to other people, uh, which leads me to Next question, so how do you establish and maintain meaningful uh, relationship? Uh, it seems that it doesn't happen in these uh, business card swapping and bar hopping uh, occasions. Uh, it seems that relationships, at least meaningful or serious relationships, are grounded in meaningful experiences. And um, let me explain you what, what I think. Uh, are these ways or what are these experiences that, that, that bonds us? Uh, and uh, let me explain it with a simple diagram, sort of my take on Maslow's Pyramid of Needs. And I apologize for such a cliche, but you know, whatever works, as Woody Allen would say. And um, what we have at the bottom of that pyramid, uh, I would say, are Random social gatherings. So you can get to know people, people in public spaces, you know, bars, nightclubs, or, or events. Um, usually in those uh, circumstances, considerable amount of alcohol is, in, uh, in, is used, and not without a reason, because you, you might have noticed with every next drink, you become you know, more sociable, and people become more interesting, and you can certainly form at least some type of relationships. Uh, uh, that way, but you might have also noticed that these are not the most lasting relationships. So I, I wouldn't suggest you stay on this uh, biological, so to say, um, level. So the next level, I would say, uh, is um, that of geographical proximity. You know, we are friends with people. You know, we grow up that were you know right next door from 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 us, and and you certainly do share some basic interests and and needs with your neighbors. You know, um, you don't want to be robbed, or you might need to share some home appliance once once in a while, and of course less and and less so. Uh, but at least the option of becoming friends with your neighbors is always there. It's physically available. But again, as I told, less and less so these days. So first level, strangers in bar. Second level, neighbors. Third level, of course, family. And uh, this is actually, these are actually people you can rely on who will show up 
uh, most likely in that hospital. And of course, you inherit a certain group of people, and then you add a few more, but then altogether, there is a rather narrow group of, of people, unless you know you're working hard on a number of, of children uh, or, or something like that. Uh, so we move to the next level, and this is the level I would say majority of our friendships kind of form, and uh, this is the level where actually our interest, uh, you know, brings us together. So hopefully you study what you're interested in, hopefully in a university you, you liked, uh, hopefully you ended up working uh, in the field that you're interested in. And this is actually the level that, you know, you can spend days and nights talking about subjects that nobody else seems to care about. This is uh, when you, you know, you're bound to run into shared troubles or find out something where you create something new and it's all great. And altogether, I would say that uh, for many people, uh, it's perfectly enough with uh, people and uh, their friends from from combination of these uh, levels. It's perfectly enough with family. Uh, it's perfectly enough with your work colleagues. But uh, I think if you're sitting here, or if you're watching uh, this talk online, there's something left wanting. You you know you want to find out something new. You want to meet other people or get to know them at least online-wise. Uh, what they what they are thinking uh, about. And this is the level that gathers people, irrespectively of their professional, social background, that gathers them to work to together on an idea or cause or purpose. And uh, of course, that is the level of uh, NGOs and it's the level of nonprofits or charities, as they are called in uh, in US. And I can uh, kind of I, I can imagine what you're thinking, and, um, and I know that nonprofits are not associated with the most effective organizations. You know, they are these hippie-like esoteric formations with uh, obscure and unrealistic aims. But uh, it doesn't have to be that way, and of course, they are such nonprofits the same way they are such businesses and such government institution, but in rea reality, some of the worst, uh, some of the best uh, uh, non-profits or organizations altogether, some of the best initiatives comes exactly from NGOs. And just to name few, and of course it is specific to uh, kind of American tradition, more of civic uh, engagement and philanthropy, but, but still, you know, Metropolitan Opera is an NGO, you know, Oxfam is an NGO, UNICEF is an NGO, Wikipedia is an NGO. Here in Latvia, Ziedo Telve is an NGO, um, Vito Fons is an NGO, ESPM um, Missi is an NGO, and even TED, TED Talks and TEDx Riga is an NGO. So what we see is, is people coming together to do something that stands outside their direct well-being, their family circle, or their money-generating uh, ideas. And it all looks so big and remote once you <laughs> look at those big logos uh, on the screen. But let me tell you my story and my, about my involvement in NGOs to show how possible or how all of you could be involved uh, on top of your family, your studies, and in work uh, in NGO sector. So. I think as long as I remember myself, uh, I've been involved um, in NGO sector in one way or the other one. I think quite typical to a Latvian, you start with a choir and then you go to a student organization, best times, and then hopefully you end up with an NGO that, that you know, attracts or is of your direct interest. Uh, uh, my interest lies in, in, in art. So, Five years ago, together with like-minded people, I founded a Contemporary Art uh, Center, Kim, here in, uh, in Riga, and they've been the most wonderful five uh, years. We've organized uh, more than 90 exhibitions. We have uh, more than 100 educational activities, talks and lectures, and we've published artist catalogs, and and translations, and we've represented 
our artists in um, you know, Shanghai, Berlin, New York, Malmo, and, uh, and just recently, actually last week, we uh, came back from Venice Biennale where we had an owner to represent um, Latvia in what is known as kind of Olympics of, of, uh, of arts. And uh, in everywhere we would uh, go and, uh, you know, whatever we would do, we would uh, meet the, the most wonderful, the most passionate uh, people. So that is my story, but I'm absolutely sure that every single one of you cares about something or is interested in in something or whatever that is, you know, whether that's fighting stupidity or, or fighting against corruption or, you know, supporting education or supporting arts and, and culture, museums, libraries, you know, fighting for LGBT rights or, or, or any other topic. There's so much you can do and I think you should really do that because that's what essentially bonds us um, together. And, um, it's only in NGOs where you see people, as I told already, from most diverse professional backgrounds uh, to come together. And it's where, you, you know, surgeons meet filmmakers. Uh, it can happen as well in a surgery room, but I wouldn't talk about these cases. But, you know, so surgeons meet filmmakers and I know ambassadors meet architects and entrepreneurs meet professors. So. This is, this is the field, this is where you go through meaningful experiences and find new friends. So just to illustrate, uh, just to illustrate how it looks visually, um, this, is, um, this is visualization of my sort of professional network, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, each color describes a certain group of, of, of people that, that I'm in, in touch with. So, well, you see down there the, the orange and, and big, I think pinkish one all relates to my studies in SSC Riga. That island over there relates to my studies in, uh, in New York. The middle part, the, the blue part, relates to my work in, in advertising and in, in consulting. But then that green part and all these satellites uh, around relates to my involvement in NGO sector. So, See what you know your social ties uh, look like, and and see how how diverse they are. And that refers to uh, professional background, but same refers to geography. I already mentioned a few cities that we are actively uh, working with, but there are so many more that that we um, could and and will be working with. So again, just to illustrate my point, uh, here is a snapshot from Google Analytics that, um, that shows the geography of, of visitors to the web page of my institution. And it's really not a web page uh, on which you can bump on. It's not advertised. You really have to look for it. So people who have found it have some interest in the same things that I'm interested in. And uh, uh, yes, as you can see, it covers almost all world. Uh, I know I think we have to work on Greenland, but but apart from that, it, it does cover all the, all the world. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, contrary to a popular belief, uh, NGOs are, are not just about giving, they are as much about, um, about getting back or receiving. And um, I started with a, with a number, and, uh, and let me finish with, with this number. Think of, uh, of us like seven billion, uh, people like molecules, like running around. What you, I think, don't want, you know, as, as Burton Russell would say, is to be like a hard, separate entity, but like a billiard ball that has, that can have no other relationship with other such entity except that of collision. What you also don't want to is to leave your chances of meeting those 150 most amazing friends of yours to a pure chance, because if you're going to sit home, nothing will ever happen. So my suggestion is to do something. And to do what? To support, get involved in one of the existing NGOs, or create a new one. Thank you.